Welcome back to the Budget Bike Build. Last video, we tried out the bike and it didn't go well. So this video, we're gonna fix the initial problems that we found from our first ride. The first thing we're gonna fix is the fork. It is completely seized and rusted where it's basically useless. Next, we're gonna fix the pedals because, well, there's only one and a half pedals, which is kind of ridiculous. And then finally, we're gonna focus on the tire. So for the fork, we're going to try something pretty budget. I found for 140 bucks at Buclos, if I'm saying that right, 120 millimeter air fork. Now this fork has 32 inch stanchions, which you know makes it comparable to the Solo Air that SR Suntier makes. Let's find out if it's a decent fork though by testing it on our budget bike. You know when I put the apron on, stuff's about to get serious. I love how ridiculously long this stem is. And then how narrow these bars are. It's amazing how geometry of bikes have changed so much in a few years because this bike is really not that old. We'll definitely come back to this in a later video. I think we can get the steering a little bit better if we do some upgrades. Oh yeah. Dead bugs and all. That bottle cage has a good purpose. <laughs> this is completely rusted on. There's always the right tool for the right job. Some penetration oil on it first and see if that can eat away at the rust there that's keeping it all put together. Before I go whacking away and break something. While that's soaking in, let's go ahead and uh, pull these brake calibers. I mean, these, uh, yeah, brake calibers off. All right, let's see if the uh, pin training will do any good. See if we can remove the fork now. And since we have no plan on keeping this fork, there we go. Now this is surprising. It has sealed bearings. Was not expecting that from a, uh, a bike of this age at least. Let's get it all cleaned up. That is really surprising that it has sealed bearings. And they're actually in really good shape too. I mean, for a bike of this, uh, in this condition, I was not expecting the bearings to be in any, in a good shape at all. So that's, that is a nice surprise. So the next thing we have to do is we have to pull off this little bitty ring there. That is, goes with the headset and the specific for the headset that's on the bike. So we have to take that off and put it on the new fork. While I'm holding this fork, this is a lot lighter. My goodness, this thing weighs a ton. Right, if you look at it, there's a little dimple right there. And that's so we can get a, uh, a tool underneath it and uh, lift it off. Like everything else on this bike, this does not want to come off. Took some uh, coaxing, but I got it off. Now we got to figure out our stack height. So basically you put the whole fork together. So we want to take off this little nub here. And there's some people that like to leave a little bit sticking up when they cut this down. I have no idea why. 
I mean, personally, it just eats at my soul whenever I see it. There's a, a few YouTubers that every time they build a bike, they, they leave just a little nub. And oh my gosh, I just want to rage quit the video whenever I see that. So we're going to mark the very bottom of that with our pick. Now, I'm sure there's actually an exact measurement that we're supposed to measure down from this mark. Um, I'm just going to go an eighth of an inch and cut there. And we're going to circumcise this uh, fork so it can be flat in front like Ken. This is one having a bench vise is really nice. So we're going to get a saw and just cut off right there. A little tip you can do, use an old uh, stem as your saw guide. And I'm just going to make it approximately an eighth of an inch below that line right there. All right, now we have a nice solid surface to cut against. Land it right in the trash can. And you can use a, um, a pipe cutter or a um, hand saw, but I like to just use a reciprocating saw just because I've used them enough where I trust my cut skills with it. And then just deburt. Make sure to always wipe it down when you're done too. That way there's any metal shavings, you don't get them in your bearings. Now for installing the star nut, you can use just a um, an old head tube uh, bolt, or I got this little uh, specific tool, uh, which isn't too expensive. So, I mean, if the tool's not too bad, always go with the tool. Because the tool installs it perfect every time. And there we go. Now I measured it with the original head spacers, head tube spacers, um, but I want to go ahead and replace them with some nicer carbon ones, you know, for that extra weight savings. So the easiest way to do that is just put them side by side and you know exactly how, how many of the new spacers to use. First you got the cap. And you have this little wedge thing that goes in there. Then you have a nice skinny spacer. Then we install our new spacers. And you're supposed to use a torque wrench for this, but basically just make sure it's snug so you're not like going crazy on cranking down on it. And there we go. Fork is installed. Let's install that brake rotor now. Now when installing the brake rotors, you don't want to make them fully tighten them because you want to be able to adjust the uh, alignment once you put the wheel on. So you're just gonna make them snug, hand tight. Next, let's do something about these pedals. These things are tight as balls on here. all-weather grease on the threads it makes it a lot easier to get it off the next time we have to get them off
So our current tires are Kenda Dry Rot Special 26 by 2.1s. So what we found are the Billy Goats. 26 by 2.1. Decent tread for use as a gravel bike. I probably wouldn't use it on a any kind of serious trails or muddy trails, but I think for a gravel bike, it'll do perfect. Little pro tip, makes it easier to put the tube in if you put a little bit of air in it. Oh, he doesn't want to fold over on itself. Just enough air so it has, it's rigid enough so you can line it up easier. Now these two tires claim to be tubeless ready. And These rims definitely could be tubeless. I am not going to do a ghetto tubeless on it because, well, the person that this bike's going to be going to be using this bike is not going to maintain it enough where tubeless would be a cost-effective option for him. So, and don't you worry. In our next video, we will uh, address this drivetrain because yeah this is pretty sad Let's talk about what we're competing with versus our Diamondback budget bike build here. So our on the low spectrum, we have another Diamondback. This one's a Response XE. Uh, basically, this was the replacement for this model. You can even look at the paint scheme. It's very similar. Geometry is very similar. Uh, overall, this should ride almost identical to this bike. Uh, Component-wise, stock this one would have came the same spec as this bike here uh, now this one has been modified a little uh, it has a wider handlebars with a shorter stem which they did not come stock like that it has mother fucker pedals which basically are a race face chester knockoff and the tires have been upgraded graded on the front only though uh, it's running a 2.2 on the front and a 2.1 on the rear. Uh, nice Continental Mountain Kings on the front. And it has been converted to a 1x, but it's only a 1x7. Uh, it's, it's not going to have the really low gear to climb hills. Uh, this one actually will climb better in the current setup than this one. Now, on our high end, we have my... Gary Fisher Cake 2. This bike comes with a Fox float fork, which those who don't know anything about Fox, that's basically it evolved into the Fox 32 that everyone loves so much. Um, it is running 2.4 tires, so a little bit bigger tires, and it's also a full suspension. Now, it's still an XC bike, but it's a full suspension XC bike, so it's going to be a little more cush regardless. Uh, this one has the shorter stem with the long 
handlebars, which makes it a little bit more uh, controllable. Uh, allows us to have nice control on the trails. Uh, this one has true race face Chester pedals. And it has a box uh, Prime 9 drivetrain on it with 11 to 52. Uh, so this one can climb basically anything. All right, sorry about the road noise. We, uh, this my BMX tracks right next to the highway. So this is my Gary Fisher Cake 2. So this is going to be our high-end test to compare to our budget bike build. Let's see how it does. All right, this is our budget build bike. Let's see how it rides. All right, this is our Diamondback response, which is our modern day version of the bike that we, our budget bike build. Let's see how this one rides now. All right, here's what we found from our test. First off, we rode our high-end bike first, just to get a baseline to see what, you know, the best situation will be. The high-end bike rode great, obviously. No problems rolling. Gearing-wise, I left it in the highest gear, which I did with the other bikes too, to give a nice, even playing field on that. So obviously our high-end bike rode great. Then I rode our budget bike build. Not much difference. Um, the only big difference I noticed is obviously the budget bike build is a hardtail where the my bike is a full suspension bike. So it, it was smoother, but the front fork didn't feel any different. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is is it didn't feel like I had as much control because of the narrow bars. Um, I get why they used to do that. That um, I mean, let's be honest. Old mountain bikes basically were road bikes, and that's how road bikes were set up for the most part. So it kind of followed that trend. Um, the wider bars definitely give you a lot more control, and you know it's definitely an upgrade we have to look at. Um, then I rode our entry level bike, which is basically the same bike, just a newer version of it. And from the R bike, from the high end bike, from the uh, budget bike build. There really was not much difference. I mean, the only issue I had on the whole ride was not even with the budget bike build. It was with my entry-level price point bike. Um, the one to lock on grips wasn't tightened all the way, so I went to roll a step down, and my, my wrist twisted out, which you know was kind of weird. Um, but that was the only issue we had with any of the bikes. I mean, honestly, I think the fork is a win. Um, the pedals are a win. I could tell from the moment I looked at them. We're going from plastic pedals that have just plastic nubs to actual pedals with metal spikes on them to give you better grip. Um, with uh, bike-specific shoes, they grip great. Have no complaints with them. Um, the tires on packed dirt, which is what a BMX track is, they rode great. Um, there were no issues with it, um, which is what this bike is going to be used for. I mean, this bike is an XC bike. A lot of people, when they look at these tires, when they look at these budget forks, they look at it from a trail bike. XC bike is not going to be doing the extreme things, drops, jumps. You might have some rollers. You're going to have some, you know, basic terrain, but nothing to the extreme that a trail bike or even a downhill bike is definitely going to see. So when people talk about how these forks, you know, good luck when you break your fork, well, it's because they're idiots using it for the wrong situation. It even says on the back of the fork that it's meant for tra light trail riding. It's not meant for downhill, free ride, or I think it said slope style. Um, I mean, so it's it's not set up for that. So, I mean, you have to look at when you're buying something like this, what are you using it for? Um, obviously, my Fox float is going to do a lot better on more extreme terrain. But for basic XC riding, 
I think the Bucklow's 26 inch fork is a win. Uh, definitely a great fork for the money and for what you're going to use it for. Now, I, did, I haven't checked longevity. Um, this bike is going to be ridden by my father, who's going to ride it a lot. So we're going to get a true test, and we'll come back to that down the road. So as I said, the only issue I really had with the bike was the control of it. Um, I really want to put some lighter bars, some better grips, and a shorter stem to give me a little more um, controls. So I, you know, that way I can you know feel more comfortable on the bike. Um, so, oh. Um, so I guess let's put these parts on next video.